Welcome to this demonstration of my air hockey program. It is a web-based simulation of an air hockey match using the rules defined by the United States Air Hockey Association, modified slightly because of the limitations of online play. As well as the match, the game also contains the infrastructure to meet other players and mutually agree to play a match with them. To see the result of other recent matches and those that are in progress, and to rank long-term performance into a ladder. It is also possible to hold a practice match against the computer. Air hockey is linked to a surrounding forum, and you must be logged into the forum in order to play. If you're not, you'll receive a polite message asking you to log on, or register an account if you don't have one. Once you're logged on, you then enter the first page, the Air Hockey Club Room. On the left, we see a list of recent matches. At the top are those that are still going on, and these update every time the score changes. Each match is decided by the first person to win four games, so there could be as many as seven games against each match, three for each player, before the seventh clinches it. There is also a duration timer, so that you can see how long it has been running. The duration time changes to an absolute time and date when the match terminates. If the match was abandoned, either the match finished without one person winning four games, then it is shown in red. Otherwise, a properly completed match is shown in black. On the far right is the current air hockey ladder, showing the scores of all those who have entered the club room and thus claim membership. An average score for someone new to the game is 450 points, but as he plays more full matches against other real opponents, this will alter, dependent on the outcome of each match. In the centre is a control panel which allows you to find and play other players, or to initiate a practice session. The top section of this is about you. Your name is shown at the top border, and your current state is indicated by the tick next to one of four options. You start as a spectator, but you can indicate that you are willing to play by invite, or that you are willing to play anyone. There is also an option to practice. Below that is a list of players who are currently online, together with a little marker to the right of their name, showing whether they are willing to play. A blank marker indicates that the player is currently a spectator and does not wish to play anyone. But if it changes to a lime green blob with the letter I in it, it indicates that the player is willing to receive invites, but will choose whether to accept them. A lime green blob with the letter A in it says that the player will immediately accept an invite from anyone. If you wish to extend an invite to a player, then click on their name. If they are willing to play anyone, your computer will immediately initiate a match with them for you. If they are in invite mode, then you will see the green blob change to purple with the letter T in it, meaning you have sent an invite to them. Note, you can only have one person invited at any one time. So if you extend your invite to someone else, you remove it from the first person. You can also remove an invite by clicking on the name of the person you have already invited. If someone extends an invite to you, their blob on your screen changes to an orange colour with the letter F in it, meaning that you have received an invite from the other person. You can have invites from several people at the same time. To accept an invite, click on the name of the person and you will start a match with them. You leave the club room and enter the page representing the match. We have to wait a few moments for the other player to notice that we've accepted his invite and to join us, but when he does, we can start counting down to the start of play. Nothing will actually happen until one or other of us hits the puck, so let us take a little time to explore this page of the game. On the far right is a message board where I output technical information about the progress of the match. This is useful as a diagnostic tool whenever anything goes wrong. So if you are playing and something strange happens, please copy and paste the contents of this area, together with the same area from your partner, into any bug reports. We are going to ignore this area for the rest of the demonstration, so let's just focus in on the rest of the page. If we ever need to leave the game, we can do so from the exit button at the top left. Below that is a scoreboard, split into the notification area with a yellow background and the match progress area with a green background. 
At the top of the notification area is a message panel which currently says Puck in Play. The game uses this area to keep us informed about what has just happened. Underneath that is an area, currently blank, where serve or foul notifications are given. Just to the right of this, also currently blank, is an area which shows who won the face-off. A face-off is won if you are the first person to be in control of the puck. You are in control of the puck if you score, or if the puck is on your side of the table for two seconds or more. Further to the right is a white square with a black border, currently empty. This shows the countdown timer when it is running. Several aspects of the game rely on timing, such as the length of time the puck is on your side of the table, or how long after serving before it is legal to hit the puck. This shows how long, in seconds, you have left. The match progress area contains the name of the two players. You are first, with the opponent shown underneath. To the right of each player is the game score for each game finished, and for the game currently in progress. Below these and to the right is a timer showing how long the match has been in progress. The table itself consists of a light blue surface with markings in the centre and at each goal, surrounded by a thin lime green strip representing the table border. At each end, the red area represents the goal. You are playing left to right, your opponent plays right to left. You control your mallet with the mouse. You pick it up by moving your mouse over it. After that, it follows the mouse around until you let go, either because you have to serve or because you move your mouse outside of the table surround. You'll notice that the opponent's mallet appears rather jerky in its movement. That is because the opponent's computer only transmits its position to us every half a second. Don't worry, his computer is accurately modelling the detail, just as ours does, and has a clear picture of the positions of both the puck and his mallet, and will record and transmit to you hits and goals and fouls that occur at his end of the table. You are doing the same for him when the puck is at your end of the table. As you can see, the puck is currently sitting in its starting position at the centre of the table, waiting to be hit. I will now do just that, so you can see the effect and hear the sound when the puck hits the mallet and when the puck hits the edge of the table. We'll leave this match to continue and come back again when it is completed. As you can see, that was rather a one-sided match, and our opponent, Carol, didn't put up much of a fight. So let's return to the club room and look at the results. You can see the results of the match on the left, but you'll also see the results on the ladder. The winner, Bob, has increased his score, while Carol's score has decreased. The scoring system is based upon Glico, a system invented by Professor Mark Glickman of Boston University and used as the basis of ranking chess players. It tries to rank players both by their absolute capability but also factor in how well you know that capability. Although it's not the case here, if Carol plays frequently and recently but Bob plays less frequently, then we believe we understand her ability quite well. In particular, if she plays Bob, then the influence he has on her score is less than Carol's influence on Bob's new score. We have now seen all the major aspects of the air hockey game except practicing. Let's just finish our video demonstration with the start of Bob playing a practice match against a computer.
We will leave Bob to it. If you would like to try the air hockey game for yourself, visit my website Chandler Zen at www.chandlerfamily.org.uk and make your way to the Software Development Community Forum and register. It is free. Once you have registered, enter the forum and follow the main menu link to Air Hockey to enter the club room. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. This video is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution and No Derivatives license. This means you are free to share it with whoever you wish, provided you keep the work unaltered and mention that it was made by me, Alan Chandler, with reference to my website Chandler Zen at the URL showing on the screen now.